What can I do to limit my susceptibility to falling prey to these sins again and again? It's too tempting. It's always there at the click of a button. She's always there. He's always there. It's always there. I share with you one last bit of advice. And it's just a conversation that took place between two of our predecessors. Ibn Qudama mentions this conversation in his book, at Tawabi. A man came to one of our predecessors. His name is Abu Ishaq Ibrahim Ibn Adham. And he had a complaint. He said, Abu Ishaq, I am committing many sins. So present me with an antidote, a remedy that will limit my desire for these sins. What did he say to him? He said, I'm going to share with you five conditions. If you're able to overcome them, then guess what? You can commit whatever sin you want. Nothing will harm you. Just five obstacles you need to overcome. He said, present them. He said, when you disobey Allah Almighty, just make sure that you're not eating any of his provisions. The man said, subhanAllah. How can I not eat from the provisions that belong to Allah whilst all of the, rizq, the provisions of life belong to him? He said, my brother, does it make sense to you to eat from the rizq of Allah, his provisions, and then disobey him using that provision, the energy he gave you? He said, no, of course not. Please present me the second. He said, the second is the following. If you want to disobey Allah Almighty, just make sure that you don't live on his land. He said, this is more difficult than the first. How can I not live on his land when the east and the west is from his land? He said, brother, does it make sense that you eat from his provisions? You live on his land and you disobey him. He said, absolutely not. Can you give me the third? He said, when you want to disobey your Lord, at least find a corner on the planet where he can't see you and disobey him there. He said, how can I do that whilst he reads my very thoughts? I can't do that. He said, brother, does it make sense to you to eat from the food of Allah and to live in the land of Allah and you know you are under the eye of Allah and then you disobey Allah? He said, absolutely not. Can you give me the fourth? He said, the fourth is that when the angel of death finally comes to claim your soul, say to him, don't take my soul. Give me just a moment to apologize to Allah. He said, you and I know that he will not accept that from me. He said, so how can you hope for any security? He said, brother, give me the fifth. He said to him, when the gatekeepers of hell come to you from the masses to take you to hell, don't go with them. He said, you know that they will not accept this from me. He said, so how can you hope for any safety after this? After this, he said to Abu Ishaq, Hasbi, Hasbi, meaning, please, this is enough, this is sufficient. Don't say anymore. Ana atubu ilallahi wa astaghfiru ilayhi. I have turned to Allah in repentance and I have apologized to him once and for all. And he remained close to Ibrahim ibn Adham, worshipping Allah Almighty until death separated between them. Brothers and sisters, for those of you who wish to turn a new leaf with their Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the path is clear. And more importantly, the opportunity is still there. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to transform all of those sins into hasanat. 